Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to go over atoms, compounds and mixtures. I'm just going to briefly explain what, what each one is. So atoms, um, you're probably aware of elements in the periodic table, so things like oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, helium, these will all be familiar to hydrogen, um, maybe less familiar is the symbol for gold, and things like that. So these are all elements. And what an element is, is um, a collection of identical atoms uh, in in nature, really. So it's, it's something we can actually grab hold of. So for example, let's have a look at carbon. So carbon, in its elemental form, um, can exist as graphite. Okay, graphite's like the, uh, the lead in your pencil. Um, also it can be diamond and these are all elemental forms and now we've got graphene and we've got Buckminster fullerene and things like that these are all different forms of the same element so that's an element okay and an element as you'll find in the periodic table is a pure form of um, an, a collection of atoms so it's the same atom so basically if I drew so there's a structure of carbon, okay? If I drew the structure of carbon, I could draw it like this as a chemist. Lots of carbons stuck together. Carbon's allowed to have four bonds, so it'd be all made up like that. And each carbon there would have four bonds, and so on and so on. No other element, no other atom, apart from carbon, is present in that pure form, and that's what makes an element an element, okay? So that's where element comes from. Now atom itself, if we look at the hydrogen atom, a hydrogen atom is made up of a proton and surrounding that proton is an electron. And I'll just draw that electron there in green. Okay, So that is the hydrogen atom, a proton there, an electron there. And I'll just draw the proton, the P there. Okay, Now that's an atom. Now, atoms can react together to form compounds. So a compound is not um, a pure form of, um, of just one atom. Okay, So it's not an element. That's what an element is. A compound, if we look at, let's take carbon and oxygen. So if we look at carbon and oxygen, you might have heard of CO, that's carbon monoxide. Or you might have heard of CO2 that's carbon dioxide. So this is a compound a compound okay and a compound is made up of different atoms. Sometimes we call these compounds molecules and that's what a molecule is but a molecule is really just a collection of atoms together that are bonded together um, covalently or ionically okay and I urge you to have a look at the um, covalent ionic bonding tutorials to uh, understand what that means. So a molecule really is a compound, and a compound is made up of different elements. So that's got different elements, okay? But an element on its own is a collection so different elements, sorry, or different atoms. That's probably best because elements is a generic term for the pure form of um, a particular atom. So we've got compounds made up of different types of atoms. And elements are collections of the same atom. An atom itself is an individual form. So for carbon, if I just scroll down a bit, run out of room on there so uh, carbon would have um, a, a mass number of 12 an atomic number of 6 which means it's got 6 protons and that's what we mean by atoms it's the individual um, fundamental building block of matter it's the it's the uncuttable part 
Um, nothing can get smaller than this for in chemistry terms. Uh, chemistry doesn't exist once this is cut up, it goes into physics. So six protons and six neutrons. Because that's that's where the mass number comes from, it's the extra neutrons that don't have charge and the uh, protons make up the atomic number that's what really defines what an atom is the atomic number that's what defines the difference between um, so if you look at oxygen 16 and 8 that's got 8 protons now and it's got 16 um, nucleons and a nucleon is basically a proton or a neutron so if we take um, 8 away from 16 we can find out the amount of neutrons so it's got 8 neutrons as well so you can see the, the nucleus, the inside of the atom, is different for the elements. And that is what's changing. That's what makes an atom an atom. It's, these, it's the change in the nucleus. The electrons should be the same. So I'll put, put six electrons. That's for carbon. However, you can lose the odd electron here and there but you can't lose protons or neutrons because they're tucked right into the nucleus there. So losing an electron doesn't change the name of the atom. So for example, a good example would be um, say carbon lost um, an electron, it would still be carbon. It would just be a charged form. So if it lost one electron it would be have a plus charge because they, they wouldn't be able to balance out the negative and the positive for the protons and the electrons. Now if we go to co uh, compounds, compounds have bonds, whether they're ionic or covalent as I've written here. So that's um, a compound that's made up like this. One thing I've missed out on this tutorial is mixtures. So I'm just going to get rid of this and just briefly explain mixtures. Now what I'll do, I'll put this to one side because I'll bring that up for the, the plenary at the end. Actually I'll just shrink that down a little bit because I can do that with this okay now mixtures are just basically non-bonded compounds all mixed up together now that's not a very good explanation but if we take air the air that we breathe that is made up of oxygen oxygen is a compound an elemental form of oxygen, the atom. So it's actually written like that, okay? So it's got a double bond with the oxygens. So that's actually um, not an atom, it's a compound. It just happens to be a compound made up of the same um, atom. And that could be regarded as an element of oxygen, the elemental form. Okay? Now then, oxygen's in the air. Nitrogen's already in the air as well, and there's a little bit of argon, and um, a little bit of water, and things like that. Okay, so I'll stop there really because this, this is like the majority of what's in the air at the moment. Now, nitrogen is a compound, argon exists on its own because it's uh, inert gas, water is a compound. Now, water's probably the easiest compound to spot because it's got different elements that make up the compound of water but together in the atmosphere in the air that we breathe into our lungs even when I'm saying this and when you're listening to this tutorial the air that we're breathing into our lungs is made up of um, compounds of oxygen, nitrogen, argon, water and other little bits as well that, um, that make up the rest of the atmosphere but they, they, these compounds, these molecules, are not connected together. They're whizzing past each other, mixed up. Um, so it's a bit like getting um, Lego bricks or something like that. And you've got these represent the red bricks. These represent the green bricks. Um, in fact, let's let's colour these in. Let's let's try and show you what I mean. So say so they're green, green bricks. Uh, these could be red bricks. These can be blue bricks, and we'll leave water as um, leave water as black for now. 
So if we made lots of these up, which is really when we're breathing things in, it's actually lots and lots and lots and lots of, just get a few of them, for example. Now I'll just get rid of this as well. Just bring that down, move it out of the way. Move that out of the way. Right, so if we have lots and lots of oxygen, which we're breathing in, you know, if we think of Avogadro's number, there's quite a lot of um, atoms and compounds that make up a mole of compound. I'll put a few more nitrogens in there. Oops. Move that across there like that. And that'll do for that one. I'll make a few more of these. Move that there. Move that there. I'll move them all around in a second. And I'll copy that. Move that over here. Move that down here. And I'll move that. Oh, I could put that one. Put that there. Okay, so if we look at this now, let's just move these to one side as well. So this is air. This is the air that we breathe. If we could look at it under the most powerful microscope ever built and actually see these atoms floating around we would see that actually these are whizzing around together okay but they're not connected to each other so if you if we take the lego um, analogy that i just mentioned where we've got um, red bricks green bricks um, blue bricks and black bricks all all uh, mixed together then then we see that if we if we accidentally spilt uh, these uh, bricks onto the floor they'd all mix up together but they wouldn't actually be connected to each other so they're not they wouldn't um, you wouldn't be able to just pick up the red one and then the blue one and the green one and the black one all stuck together it doesn't work like that so these compounds are quite happy and stable uh, at room temperature and, and normal atmospheric conditions to exist on their own as their own molecules. They will whiz past each other, so that nitrogen might be going whoo, all the way around, bumping into these molecules, but unfortunately, as it bumps into them, it doesn't, it doesn't, necessarily, um, it doesn't necessarily react with them. So this is a mixture of compounds. So that's the difference between a mixture and a compound and an atom, really. So this molecule of water is made up of two atoms, two different types of atoms. One of them is hydrogen, and it's got two lots of them, and the other one's oxygen, and that makes it a compound. Argon is just an individual element on its own. Um, as in the atomic form, one atom makes up one argon um, piece of gas, you know, the, um, that's floating around. Oxygen needs to exist as uh, two oxygens bonded together for it to exist um, in a stable form. Same with nitrogen, but it needs three bonds. And this, these, how many bonds are required, you, you learn as you, you develop your chemistry knowledge. And if you, if you look at how uh, bonds are made, you'll be able to see why there's two there, and why there's three there, why there's one there, and, and so on and so on. So hopefully that explains the difference between atoms and compounds and mixtures. I'll just um, go over the, uh, what we've covered today. So, you remember I mentioned carbon. In the elemental form it exists as graphite and diamond and that really means as an element this exists made up of just carbon atoms and an atom is defined by its, its um, atomic number and the isotope, which I've not mentioned isotopes, it's not relevant for this tutorial but you have a look at the isotope tutorial if you want to have, uh, dig deeper um, the isotope uh, of the atom is actually defined by the number of neutrons that are present um, compounds themselves compounds um, things like um, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in the atmosphere these are made up of different atoms uh, but compounds with elemental forms uh, like oxygen are made up of just one type of atom, um, same with nitrogen.
but that's still a compound it's it's two atoms bound together so you, once you've got more than one atom um, bound that becomes a compound or a molecule we call them molecules as well um, mixtures this is very important because people um, do get confused with mixtures mixtures are made up of different compounds or elements it could be uh, elemental forms as well um, so you could have a mixture you could have carbon in there as well or you know we've got argon there which is is not a compound it's just an atom um, so mixtures are made up of a collection of different uh, atoms or compounds that do not react together they're just mixed up in in a, in, in a mixture <laughs> you know that's that's all they are by definition they're all just mixed up randomly and just think of that lego analogy where you've put all your your blue green red and black bricks on the floor and they're all mixed up it's exactly the same thing so i hope you enjoy this tutorial um, do look out for the um, other tutorials on ionic and covalent bonding as well as isotopes and i'll talk to you soon